Good morning and welcome. Pick Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on a Tuesday. Our toll free number 800 951 The website at allamericangold.com. And you know, we're creeping up on the Thanksgiving holiday, the Christmas holiday. And we've got, well, a lot of people seeming to be in the holiday spirit. Uh, when, when it comes to, oh, don't worry, it's going to be okay. We have a ton of Fed talk today. Matter of fact, I'll say this. Today is probably the best day in the last week and a half, really, since since school took off with what was going on in the Middle East. I think today is the best day because Jay Powell's talking and a bunch of other Fed guys are talking. And they want to tell you. Hey, don't worry. It's got to be okay, baby. I mean, we're not sure, but but there's still a path, and and somehow miraculously, miraculously, uh, we're we're going to get inflation to come down. You know, because we're we're done fighting it, but it's just going to come down miraculously, and it's not going to do it because millions and millions of people lose their job. No, 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 no. That's not what's going to happen. It's just going to fall because. And, and we're going to somehow maybe uh, a re- avoid a recession and all this stuff. This is, I would say, probably the end of uh, the homerism that, that has been going on since last week's announcement that the Fed, uh, you know, and again, Jay Powell didn't say it. But that it looks like they maybe probably could be done raising rates. Uh, we're going to help you kick off the holiday season uh, with a great special uh, later on in the show. But uh, the other big news, and, and don't somehow this is also okay. We talked about this uh, last week. WeWorks made it official, filing for bankruptcy. A ton more of commercial real estate. Uh, is going to get the proverbial jingle mail, and then the ones that they don't get rid of, right? They're, they say that the uh, now we don't have the details yet, but the properties that they want to keep, Jason, they said that you know ninety percent of those properties they've worked out deals with the the current landlords to pay something less than what they were paying previously, and then of course the ones they don't want. Yeah, they're just going to hand them all back. Oh, that's 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 good, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. When it, when it comes to the, the properties and 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 the commercial, especially commercial, we know the commercial backed securities are, are are really really in jeopardy. So, uh, I think this is something you'll see a lot more of, Joe. I just uh, I, this looks to be really really bad. Every time I see anything about commercial backed uh, properties, it's it just looks worse and in. Let's face it, we're looking at a, a recession slash depression we're coming up on. How is that going to help any of this? Yeah. First of all, you can't well, barely get the loans to begin with, and now what? You're, you're going to have any customers? That's, Apparently this is fine. Don't, don't, at least for right now, it, it's fine. Nobody panic. Uh, d- don't worry about it. Now, this was a uh, company that was ba- valued at $47 billion at the height of it. Uh, during its, its run here, uh, for those of you that don't know, by the way, WeWork's relatively new. I think the IPO was 2019, and this was the, hey, we're going to buy office space. But we're not buying it for the big guys. We're buying it for, hey, uh, you know what, you gotta, you're got you a one-man shop. Or maybe you've got a couple of employees. You just need a suite, right? You, you Maybe you need... Two or three suites, right? But you don't need a floor. You definitely don't need five floors uh, of an office building. Uh, and they provided things like a, a gale to answer the phone and sit there and direct traffic and all, you know, kind of make you look bigger than what you are. Well, here's the problem. Uh, that was probably would have been a great business model 20 years ago. Probably would have been fantastic. Obviously, with the internet and everything else, right? People don't go. I know. I just work in my house. I, I don't go to the office. But they raised, ready for this, 
almost fourteen billion dollars had a valuation of forty seven billion dollars at one point uh, now completely wiped out uh, everybody's going to be uh, I guess flipping the bill here the shareholders get nothing the bondholders uh, at least of the properties they're going to give back uh, they're going to get nothing J Jason and, and it's just and here's the problem though the inventory levels, which were already horrendous, uh, are, are now going to be even that much worse. Uh, it'll be interesting. You know, last week we had a, a bank in Iowa go under because of the trucking companies. It's going to be very curious to see if over the next two, three, four weeks, if we don't get more banks going under with WeWork. I don't know that, but it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I saw a guy talking a model about uh, big cities, and they may model. He says, you know, everything that's been going on in San Francisco, that's the model for the future for all these big cities. And they've had the most distressed properties, and they've had a lot of huge ones go under already. So uh, I don't know if that guy is, is, is right, Joe, but if, if, if his model is correct, we're going to see a lot of the, you know, Denver's and Phoenix and New York, which New York is already horrible. You know, they, they can't keep any businesses open there. Uh, that's that's not a good sign, Joe, for the future. And like I said, I'll go back to it again. It, it's one thing you can't get loans and support your business, and then you just sandwich that with no customers coming in because nobody can buy your wares, right? Well, it's funny you said that. McDonald's today announced uh, their flagship San Francisco store shutting down. Why? Well, the only people left in are the are the homeless. But apparently they don't like to pay for stuff. Pick the Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592. Pick the Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Tuesday. A quick look in here. Uh, the Dow's up 45. We'll see if it holds. Uh, it was down pretty heavy this morning, obviously, with... We work in other economic data that wasn't great, uh, despite the Fox Business report. Well, what a horrible report that was. Uh, but, hey, uh, things aren't quite as they appear. The S&P's up 14. The Nasdaq's up 100. Gold's down 15. By the way, we've got a great deal coming. Silver's off 60 cents. Listen to this. Crude oil, down $2.40. Below eighty dollars again. How? How's that happening? Did we? Did we all of a sudden just get a whole ton of crude oil we didn't know about? I mean, what what just happened there? Interesting. The bond market. Of course, remember the Fed's got to start. Uh, the Treasury's got to do that special auction coming up. But uh, four, five, nine today and the dollar miraculously is also strong yeah i mean that's a clean sweep if you're worried about wait a minute that doesn't really add up in my head let's see we've got to sell huge amounts of debt that we're having a hard time doing the atlanta fed said gdp is going to go from five percent to one percent jobs created was the lowest print i think of the year pretty close if it wasn't right next to it and the fed said oh, well we know inflation's too high but we really can't do anything about it kind of seems like it doesn't add up here if you're in that camp uh maybe you want to go and call our friends over at y refi and say you know what yeah, I want I want to get a little diversification out of this market because, uh, yeah, I'm not trusting any of this stuff. You get up to 10.25 percent fixed rates of return. What does fixed rate mean? And that never changes. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. You can turn your income on. You can turn it off. Right. You can use it as a you know some. Hey, maybe you want to throw a million bucks in there at 10.25 percent. Right. Oh my gosh, you're you're, you're like hey, that's that's. Make you uh, know a hundred grand plus. Well, you can turn it on, you can turn it off. You get you get a check every month if you want. You can compound it if you want. Uh, there are no fees. I mean, it's awesome. Check them out. Invest 
YREFI.com, the word invest, the letter Y, R E F Y.com, or call them at 888 YREFI24. So, why is it? How can this be? Right? We just had another major bank. I mean, we've had so many, but, th- you know, we were, they were one of those darlings, right? Well, like I said, a lot of Fed talk today. Austin Goolsby. You know, when you put clowns in these positions, this is what you get. Right? Janet Yellen. I mean, really? You did. You had an option of rolling over the debt at ultra-low rates for a very short period of time or a really long period of time. So would you rather lock in low rates for six months, a year, two years, or would you rather lock them in for 30? And how about all the people, how many of you out there, either you've done it, your neighbor's done it, a family member, there's somebody you know that refied their mortgage and locked in what? The low rate for how long? 30 years, right? Yeah, I want that low payment, you know, pretty much forever. We didn't do it. Instead, we did the opposite. Well, let's just lock it in for a little while. Now, we're going to be forced to lock in high rates for a really long time. It's not a good picture. But here comes Austin Goolsby. Now, he he is new to the Fed. Another one of these, uh, again, I'll, I'll just call it the way I see it. The, the Homer, right? This is a guy that tells you that the Arizona Cardinals, who have won a whopping one game, are somehow going to win the rest of their games, go to the playoffs, and win the Super Bowl. This is, this is who we're putting in these jobs. Right? People that are fine, don't worry. I forget what other clown, another new clown. Oh, well, the debt, the debt has, it's, it's not hurting us that much right now. Right? I mean, later, it may be, but we're going to be okay. $34 trillion, that's okay. Really? Okay. So what did Alston Goolsby say today? By the way, he's the Chicago Fed president. So we didn't stick him like in Richmond, right? We, we didn't stick him in, in one of the, you know, Minneapolis or one of these. No, no, let's put him in Chicago. Well... Guess what he had to say? He said, because of some of the strangest of this moment. Right? So, wait, wait, wait. The strangeness of this moment. Because of that, there is a possibility of a golden path. I love when they use gold in their analogies, right? It's a golden path. Really, it, it's like the Wizard of Oz. Austin Goolsby says, let's, let's go find the wizard. We're going to do it this time, right? He's probably got his little dog. Right, got the scarecrow, the tin man, the lion. Oh, boy, Austin, where are we going to go? We're going to follow the yellow brick road. We've got inflation down without a recession. That, that's what he says. Hey, this is just the strangeness of possibilities. If that happened, and he did this, listen, on live TV. Yeah, this is this is how you're supposed to invest your money on, with guys like this. It would just be a continuation of what we've seen this year. See, it'd be just a continuation, right? Where unemployment is up. That's kind of a stretch. Now, he did say, okay, well, modestly. Uh, really, it's only up this last report. Matter of fact, I think it actually may be the same as it was in January, but it did go down earlier this year. Now it's coming back up. But inflation has come come down a lot, Jason. And so that, that that's our goal. 
yes, we are, there is a, a sliver. No, he didn't say sliver. No, nope, he said there is a golden path to somehow inflation magically going away and nobody losing their job and the economy just go, goes along, everything's fine. Uh uh. Yeah, I don't I don't know how, how he came up with that. I mean, if uh, if inflation goes away, we briefly talked about this in the morning. Inflation going down means market crashing and burning bad, and then you have uh, demand destruction. That would only be the only thing I can get the prices to go back down. There's too much money floating around from when they printed in 2020. Uh, his his magic path of no recession and inflation going away. Uh, it, it makes no sense. I mean, if they want if they want the markets not to crash, then the Fed's going to have to start, you know, rip, ripping out the printing press and just starting to print money and giving it to everybody so everybody can pay their bills, and that creates the inflation. He's he's got no path with that situation where, where we currently sit, Joe. There's just there's just it can't happen. His his golden path is a is a fictional story, just like the Wizard of Oz. Well, well, like I said, today is the day. Because it does have, right, the, yeah, that sounds great, right? Just think about, yeah, the stock, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go for that, right? Yes, I mean, you've never been right about anything ever, but yeah, sure, why not? Well, here's what's funny, because he talked about, man, it's the fastest drop in inflation going back to 1982. Well, there's two things wrong with that statement. First of all, right, we know about the 80s, right? If, you know, the Fed funds rate was like 16%. The other thing is they actually tracked inflation in 1982. We don't track inflation anymore. That's a fact. No, we don't do that. No, we, we track uh, inflation-like stuff. Right? Here's how they think that they've got inflation going down. Well, if something's too expensive for you, you'll buy something else that's less expensive. So therefore, see, it really wasn't inflation, was it? You still got something. It wasn't what you wanted, but, it, but you know, of course, the problem is that something else you bought, that got more expensive. But, but listen to this. He stressed that, you know, the accomplishment of the quote-unquote golden path won't be an easy task. Unusually for a soft landing of this magnitude, there has never been an inflation rate drop getting inflation down as much as we've talked about without a big recession. Now, notice how he said, big recession. Now, that's the only bit of truth Austin Goolsby, head of the Chicago Federal Reserve, said in this whole interview. By the way, this path I just told everybody we can do, yeah, we've never done it. Matter of fact, we've never even come close to doing it. But somehow, this way, this time... They're going to be able to do it. He wrapped it up by saying it's basically, historically, has never happened. But let's shoot to try to manage that. Let me tell you what, what's going to happen. This guy's going to shoot an air ball. It's not even going to be close to the rim, right? And, and, and all of this, again, is not based on actual facts. It's not based on what's actually happening in the world, in the economy. This is exactly what we get out of these guys, which is we're going to stick our head in the sand and pretend that it's not happening, Jason. I mean, th this is foolish nonsense that's being perpetrated on, on, on the American public. If you look at... Uh the 1929 stock market crash and goes from about late 29 to about 1932 you can see that cpi you can see that that inflation number drop off a, a cliff from about i don't know five percent or ten percent how they measure today down to depression and uh, for him to think that there's going to be market bliss and no inflation i could see the inflation going away joe if nobody could buy anything 
You can't you can't raise prices if nobody can buy anything. So I can see the inflation kind of go away during a market, uh, a, a, a massive market crash. But no way, no way he's going to get the, you know, the inflation goes away and the markets are happy. That's just, it's just what not happened? the way it's set up. Yeah, what happened? Think about what Jason just said. Inflation can go away when no one can buy anything. What happens when no one can buy anything? Hmm. Gee, let me think. What happened? Oh, wait. I know. That's called the recession. Right? That, that's what it's called when no one can buy stuff anymore. And what happens when no one can buy stuff? Oh, that's right. Companies go out of business. Yep. Oh, they lay people off. They do what we work today did and said, we're filing for bankruptcy. This is what we're in for. And this is part of the problem because they... They, they don't want to admit it. And I'm glad, I am glad that finally we have some of these billionaires who've engorged their wealth on these idiots. Call, come out finally and start saying, you know what? Maybe we need to just start firing these people because they're not very good at their job. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour on this Tuesday. By the dips, from the dips. I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I guess if you believe in the Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus, maybe the Easter Bunny, uh, the Good Witch, right? Uh, Austin Goolsby just had those, you know, those monkeys in the Wizard of Oz flying out of his backside today. I can promise you one thing, because you're right, I don't know what's going to happen. I know what he said isn't going to happen. How do I know? Because it's never happened. Why? Well, because it's not possible. I mean, pretty simply put, it's not possible. When you take and contract the money supply and choke off the money, eventually you kill the demand. That's what's going to happen. It's not rocket science. It's not hard. But take advantage because we've got a great deal. You know what? I'm in the holiday spirit. I know it's probably too early to talk about Christmas. Right? We want to wait till after Thanksgiving. But I'm in the holiday spirit. So today... We have $20 gold pieces at $2,175, which is a fantastic price. And that's $50 off the regular price from yesterday. Gold's only down 15 bucks. It's one of the cheapest prices we've had since, you know, gold's run back up here. But just like on those TV commercials, but wait, there's more. For every $20 gold piece you buy, we are going to throw in a Trump mugshot silver round. Uh, you see them on our website, right? They're super cool. Uh, really kind of cool. And I, I, me personally, I think this works. This coin works for the Trump lover and the Trump hater, I think. Right, right? It, it can go both ways. A, a great little prayer. Well, what is that going to cost you? Nothing. Twenty one seventy five. You get a $20 gold piece in the Trump mugshot coin, which is, you know, that's valued at 30 bucks. But wait, there's more. If you buy 10 $20 gold pieces, I'm going to lower the price to 2165 and you can get 10 mugshot coins well what is that going to cost same price 2165 so you get 10 ounces of silver if you buy 20 or more 2150 then you guessed it you're going to get 20 ounces of of the Trump mugshot coins, and think about it. What a great, great way! Hand them out to your buddies for Christmas. Give, give, give them out to all your Trump lovers. Heck, you know what? 
Maybe you give them uh, to your Trump-hating mother-in-law. Who knows? I mean, write a little gag gift, if you will. But great pricing. And in all honesty, great pricing. I mean, I don't care how you look at it. You can say, well, I'm buying a 20 for twenty one seventy five, and I'm getting uh, an ounce of silver for free. Or you can say, hey, I bought a Trump coin for $30. Right, and I only paid. You know what? What is that math there? Twenty-one forty-five for a twenty. Right? If you if you if you buy twenty of them, heck, if you want to pretend that you only bought them for twenty-one twenty, great. I don't care. But either way, uh, you're going to get a. Not only is it an ounce of silver, it's pretty cool, right? The Trump thing. I I think for our generation, you know, and I know Jason's in his forties. I'm in my fifties. We'll always probably talk when politics comes up. And this could be 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, right? We're, we're probably going to talk something about Donald Trump in that conversation. Yeah, yeah, we have no... I'll tell you, because of political futures, there's uh, sky's the limit as far as what can happen, right, Joe? <laughs> I mean, except for uh, except for having somebody like John F. Kennedy try to actually fix the country. Uh, that aside, I, I see anything. You, we could have Biden for three terms. You know, they, they could just change things overnight, right, Joe? They, we could have uh, we, we could have any number of situations, and, and obviously, uh, in the last bunch of years, Trump has been a big political figure, so. It's uh, it's definitely going to be one of those things where uh, you know, as as the years go on, it's people are going to see that coin twenty, thirty years from now and just remember, no matter good or bad, they're going to remember. I remember those years. I remember those years, right? Because Trump Trump can't live forever, right, Joe? You no, know, absolutely can't. But I, I tell you what, it's a great value. The gold pieces by themselves that's a phenomenal price. That's that's really is fantastic pricing. And then you get to pick up an ounce of silver with it, and it just happens to be the Trump mugshot. You, you can't go wrong. Phones are already lined up here. So we, we've got a couple of lines open. Take advantage of it, 800-951-0592. And think about who we got in his place, Joe Biden. Home Depot co-founder Bernie Marcus did not hold back talking about socialism, uh, corporate wokeness and the Biden administration in general. I've said this to all my friends, Marcus said. Anybody who would listen, if this election goes the way the last one went, this country will be a third world country. I'm going to tell you right now, this is the fear. And I don't. It doesn't even have to be Joe Biden. If, if we get people in there that want to, st- like Austin Goolsby, that want to stick their head in the sand, don't want to admit that you know what we've become this welfare sa- state, choking on debt. Notice, you know what? Really, even with you know Mike Johnson now, has anybody? Have you heard anybody talk about spending less money? Nope. You know what I've heard? Well, I want some offsets. Right. Well, if I, we're going to spend more money, I want you to take some money away somewhere else. But Jason, no one's actually talked about actually spending less money. No, they were supposed to try to, you know, make the uh, the budget a little more manageable, but uh, it, it, that caused a constitutional crisis <laughs> with the, with the Speaker of the House, and and what they're going to end up with is just more spending. I think well, I think you said it best. I think the best we can hope for is uh, slowing the velocity of of the spending rises. That's that's the best that, they, that the average American can hope for. Think about what people are saying. Stan Drunken Miller said Janet Yellen. Why is she in her job? She's a moron. Re- essentially, he didn't call her a moron, but he did. Uh, Muhammad El Area, Jay Powell, and the Fed ha- don't have a strategic bone in their body. And now the co-founder of Home Depot just called the president a dunce and a puppet. And that if the this next election goes the way this one did, yeah, the United States is headed for ruin. I mean, these are things I don't think we've ever heard people say before, which just tells you, right, that w- what, what we're getting ready for. We'll be back after the break. Nine 
855-905-592. Patriot Radio News Hour, Joe and Jason. Uh, the big special of the day uh, is the $20 gold pieces, 1 through 9, 2175, 10 through 19, 2165, 20 or more, 2050 on top of that. For every $20 gold piece you buy, you will get the Trump mug shot silver round. So if you buy five, you're going to get five one ounce Trump mug shots silver rounds at no additional cost. If you buy 50, you'll get 50 of them at no additional cost at 800 951 0592. Now, obviously, listen, you don't have to buy a $20 gold piece to get one of these Trump coins. We got two of them. If you're looking for uh, some Christmas gifts, maybe birthday, something like that, uh, we've got the mugshot round and the Trump 45th president round. Uh, those are both available. They're $30 a piece. Uh, so if you want to just pick up some of those, Obviously, call, order those. We have those in stock at, at both locations uh, at 800-951-0592. So now today, I told you about Austin Goolsby. This is why uh, there, there's, for a day anyway, some they think some miracle, the, the Wizard of Oz. Uh, that, that's a true story, apparently, according to Austin Goolsby. Yep. Yep, the Tin Man and the Scarecrow and the Lion, you know, the, 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 the Bad Witch, the guy behind the curtain, right? Well, who's behind the curtain? Is it Jay Powell and Janet Yellen? Is it Joe Biden? I mean, who's really pulling the lever here? Think about what Jamie Dimon said just last week. I don't know what these guys are doing. People are not ready. Wall Street's not listening. The banks aren't listening. And it's going to be very, very ugly. And it's kind of interesting that the, you know, I guess what we would say, the most important banker in the world is telling us one thing. And then these bankers that we put in charge, I didn't elect them for, did I vote for Austin Goolsby? Hell no, I didn't. Jay Powell, Janet Yellen, nope. Somehow these appointed officials, uh, somehow Jason say, oh, there's a path. I mean, there's probably, you know, what what, what would you say, one in a million? You know, I'd love to know his odds of this path actually happening. I I think it's zero. (laughs) I mean, I I mean, I guess anything can happen, I I guess. I mean, there would have to be some really... Uh, really big, powerful people to just sort of fake what he's what he's talking about to happen, but I don't think anybody's actually got the fortitude or want to lose that much income, that much wealth to just to have a soft landing like he's pretending that's going to happen, Joe. So no, I, I would say zero, zero chance that you don't get massive inflation or you get a massive market crash. It's it's zero percent. So it's there's just no other, no way around it, Joe. Thirty four trillion dollars in debt. You know, all that spending, all that money printing, you know, all, you know, wars are popping up, contrived or, or organic, however you see it. There's just there's zero chance, zero chance of, of a non-turbulent economic future. There's just zero chance. I mean, how, yeah, I was just saying it this way. There are financial rulers of this world, and they can't have calm waters to steal from us, Joe. There has to always be turbulent waters for the moneyed vultures to keep sucking the blood off of the citizens, Joe. So, no, it's there is no soft landing situation like he's calling for. I'm just going to tell you this. $2,000 gold is just the beginning. You know, what, was it earlier this week, maybe it was late last week, when we talked about how much gold these central bankers have bought? Right? Over 800 metric tons in the first nine months. Never in history have they bought that much. Now, last year, last year they ended up with a record, right? They bought, what was it, over 1,000 metric tons. 
Right? Never had ever have they done that before. Why are they doing it? Because they think Austin Goolsby's golden path is going to be what happens? Do you really do you believe that? Or do you believe because they already know change is coming? What kind of change? The change to the end of fiat money. And really, uh, I hate to say it. Now, it's not the end of the United States as far as being the world's reserve currency. It is going to be a much reduced role as the reserve currency. Now understand, as I've tried to educate you, that means the world will buy less debt. Less U.S. debt. Why? Because they don't need U.S. dollars. Because they don't want U.S. dollars. Think about it. They were happy to buy U.S. dollars in the 80s in the 90s, in the early 2000s. But now, 50 years after they closed the gold window, now we're at year 52. 52 years later, we're right back to where we were. And we're almost at that point, what we're kind of reversing the spoils that we had after, you know, winning World War II, which was everything's priced in dollars. That is going away. It's going away rapidly. And all of a sudden, the world says, you know what? I think I want gold, and I think I want it right now. 800 951 Jason and I, final segment when we get back. 800-951-0592, uh, today's special, and it's not even, it's not a good one. It's a great one. $20 gold pieces, twenty one seventy five, one through 9, 10 through 19, 21 65, 20 or more, $2,150 plus. However many 20s you buy, you buy one, you buy 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50. For every 20 you buy, you get a one ounce silver Trump mugshot round. 800 951 0592. I want you guys to think about this. Executive Order 6102 in 1933 took all the gold. And then a couple of executive orders that followed uh, that made it illegal to own it. You know what most people don't know? People fought this. No, we say that everyone gave it willing. That really isn't true. Matter of fact, it went all the way, the way to the Supreme Court. It had only passed. It was only up, upheld, Jason, five to four. It wasn't like the, it was one of those nine to nothings. This was a, a very, very uh, dis, dis, divisive thing that happened. But think about when Nixon closes the gold window. Because really, gold and the dollar were the same in the eyes of our government. So, so gold was $20 all the way up until 1933. And then it was illegal to own. Then the government said it was $35. But you couldn't own it. They closed the gold window in 1971. Gold by 1974 went from thirty dollars to 170. Right by the end of 1980, we are talking about eight hundred dollar gold. What was happening that caused us to close the gold window? All the other central banks around the world were saying, hey, we don't want any more debt. Give us gold. Because that was it. Foreign governments who bought our debt could tell the United States, I'd rather be paid in gold. 
So Nixon said you can't do that anymore. Now remember, from winning World War II, right, everything was priced in dollars. So everybody had to own dollars to buy oil, to buy wheat, to buy corn. You know what's funny? That's no longer true now. Now, not totally, right? But I'll look at what China's doing. Hey, you can buy in renembis, euros, this, that, right? There's a lot more trade than ever not being done in dollars. And guess what the central banks are doing, Jason, once again? If, we don't, if we're not buying dollars, we don't need U.S. debt. We want to own gold. And these guys are pretending that we can just run these debts forever. It's just not going to happen. Well, I mean, there's, trying there's to keep... no gold window to close this time, right? No gold window to close. Keeping everyone in debt is definitely their goal. That's how they they uh, get to be the decision makers. But, yeah, as far as the the current system that's in place, Joe, it's long in the tooth. These economic cycles usually go about, you know, 80, 80 to 120 years, Joe. So we're at the end of that cycle. That's why everyone talks the, 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 the big reset, the global reset, right, Joe? 800-951-0592. Jason and I were coming right back. It's actually, we got Steve Stars today. This ought to be a really good one. We'll be right back with you.